The Nava Lighthouse is located on an island and is a popular destination for tourists visiting the main coast and it is also a popular spot for fishermen as well as divers. The cove is often sheltered, making it an ideal dive site when seas are rough elsewhere. Here are a couple of UNH student divers preparing for a research dive. Because of the variety of marine life and habitat at the Noble, UNH and other institutions carry out research experiments here. The divers are putting on the last of their gear and are about ready to head down to the water. It's a Saturday morning and there are many divers at the Nubble. You can usually recognize a diver in a dry suit because it is bulkier than a wetsuit, but also a lot warmer. Our UNH divers are doing one last equipment check before entering the water. Beginner and advanced diving classes are taught at the Nubble. Here an instructor is helping a student with her tank. One group is already out in the water preparing for their descent. Many other groups of student divers and members of dive clubs are making their way to the water. Saturdays are a busy time at the Nubble. The rocks are slippery, so divers have to tread carefully with their heavy gear. Here's diver Mike signaling that he is ready to descend. He discharges the air from his buoyancy compensator and disappears below the surface. Mike has a diver propulsion vehicle, or DPV, also known as an underwater scooter. It enables him to travel large distances underwater without consuming much air from his tank. The rocky features of the coast extend below water. There are many crevices and small caves to explore. At a depth of about 50 feet in the middle of the cove, the bottom turns to sand. Notice how the waves from previous storms have sculpted the sand even at this depth. In the distance we spot a lobster trap, which are common out here. You can hear the sound of our scooter as we approach the trap. We stop to inspect it. Can you tell how many lobsters and crabs are trapped inside? Watch closely. If you counted three lobsters and four crabs, you are correct. We often find damaged and lost lobster traps from storms. Here is one with a cluster of squid eggs attached. Schools of pollock are often seen on dives. They seem curious and frequently circle divers in large numbers. Roaming lobsters are common out here. Here one has lost a claw, but don't worry, it can grow another one. We're now in about 70 feet of water at the eastern point of the island and spot a lone frilled anemone on top of a boulder. Anemones are among the prettiest animals in the Gulf of Maine. The prettiest of them all is the northern red anemone, shown here. A short horn sculpin blends in with the rocks and seaweed, waiting for prey. They quickly lend forward. With their large mouths, they swallow unsuspecting crabs and small fish. Look closely, you can see the short horns on the head of the sculpin. Forbes sea stars are often seen at the Nubble and blood stars as well. The rocks provide hiding places for many creatures such as green sea urchins and the Atlantic wolffish. Usually wolffish are found in small caves, but here is a large one out in the open. 
Wolffish can crush the shells of their prey with their powerful jaws. We return to the sandy area and find a lone rock crab. Let's see if it can outrun the diver. A flounder hides in the sand. Can you see it? Only the movement of its gills gives it away. Another flounder hides among the rocks and seaweed. We can get quite close because it relies on its camouflage for protection. Another resident of the sandy area is the winter skate. Skates are related to stingrays and sharks, but they are harmless animals. At times, the cove fills with lion's mane jellyfish. They are the largest jellyfish in the world and can exceed six feet across. Their stinging tentacles extend far into the water. We have to be especially careful when filming these animals. They use their tentacles to sting fish and even other jellyfish and draw them up into the bell where they are consumed. Jellyfish have no brain or skeleton and are about 95% water. On this dive, we are lucky to come across the sea raven, as they are not common here. While its spines are quite sharp, they are not poisonous like those of its cousin, the scorpion fish of the tropics. See how its beard looks like seaweed? Around the island, kelp is found at depths of 15 to 25 feet. Their fronds sway in the current, extracting nutrients from the water. On the back side of the island, there is a massive bed of sugar kelp. Kelp forests like this one are an important habitat for fish and shellfish. In the shallows on the seaward side of the island, we encounter strong wave action beating against the rocky shore. We have to be careful not to be driven onto the barnacle-covered rocks by an unexpected large wave. We use a dive scooter to reach the back side of the island. Back at the entry point, there are a number of underwater memorials. Here is one to Dorothy Driscoll. Rest in peace, Dorothy. As we enter the shallows, the sunlight dances on patches of sea lettuce, a very different experience from the deep areas of the Nubble. A school of juvenile pollock greets us as we prepare to ascend from our dive. We slowly ascend to the surface. It's been a good dive. If you want to see and talk to divers, go to the Nubble any Saturday morning when there is good weather. They are always happy to tell you more about their sport. For links to my other educational videos, go to seps.unh.edu slash person slash n dash Dennis dash Chastine. Thank you.